Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, also known as IBB, is a former Nigerian military general and statesman who served as the military president of Nigeria from 1985 to 1993. He is widely regarded as one of the most influential figures in Nigerian history. During his time in office, Babangida launched a series of reforms aimed at modernizing the Nigerian economy, improving infrastructure, and promoting political and social stability. He is also credited with promoting democratic reforms in Nigeria and introducing a new constitution that increased the power of the presidency, allowed greater political freedoms, and established a two-party system. However, Babangida's presidency was not without controversy. He faced criticism for his handling of ethnic and religious tensions and his handling of the Gulf War, which resulted in Nigeria's suspension from the Commonwealth. He was also widely criticized for his handling of the Nigerian economy, which experienced high inflation and a currency crisis during his presidency. Despite these criticisms, Babangida remains a significant figure in Nigerian history and continues to be the subject of controversy and debate. In today's video, we will explore the life and legacy of Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida and examine his impact on the political and economic landscape of Nigeria. Don't miss this, make sure you watch this video to the end. Let's dive right in. His Early Life and Education Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida was born on August 17, 1941, in the town of Mina, Manchuria, to Muhammad Babangida and Ashadu Babangida. His family was of Fulani origin, and he grew up in a traditional Muslim household. His parents were farmers who lived in the rural village of Mina, Nigeria. As a result of his Muslim background, before going to primary school from 1950 to 1956, he obtained a foundational Islamic education. Later from 1957 to 1962, he attended government college in Bida. Babangida's childhood was marked by poverty and hardship. Despite this, he was a bright and ambitious student, and he showed an early talent for leadership and organization. In 1962, Babangida went on to attend a prestigious military academy in Manchuria. He was known for his intelligence, determination, and charisma throughout his childhood and early adulthood. He was highly respected by his peers and was widely seen as a natural leader. He was also known for his sense of humor and his ability to connect with people from all walks of life. Babangida's Military Career On December 10, 1962, Babangida enlisted in the Nigerian army. He attended the Nigerian Military Training College in Kaduna while serving in the army. He subsequently studied at the Indian Military Academy from April to September 1963, and he graduated with his commission as a second lieutenant and a regular combatant officer in the Royal Nigerian Army. Babangida kept advancing in the military. He served as the commanding officer of the 1st Reconnaissance Squadron from 1964 to 1966. Babangida further studied gunnery and the Saladin armored car during his four-month stay at the Younger Officers course at the Royal Armored Center in the United Kingdom in 1966. When Lieutenant Babangida was assigned to the 1st Reconnaissance Squadron in Kaduna, he was present for the brutal coup d'etat of 1966 that resulted in Sir Amadou Bello's murder. He participated in the Murtala Mohammed-led counter-coup that removed General Agiyi Ransi and replaced him with General Yakubu Gowon in July, along with some other young officers from northern Nigeria. Babangida distinguished himself as a talented and capable soldier and was soon promoted to the rank of major. He went on to serve in several key positions in the military, including Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Defense Staff, and President of the Armed Forces Ruling Council. He was known for his exceptional leadership skills and strategic vision, and he was recognized as one of the most promising young officers in the Nigerian military. Babangida served as a commanding officer in Nigeria's civil war that broke out in 1967. He was a key figure in the war effort, and his leadership and strategic vision were instrumental in bringing an end to the conflict. In a speech that he gave many years later, he called this war as being the most painful national trauma whose emotional scars will continue to haunt Nigeria for years to come. Babangida continued to rise through the ranks of the military in the years that followed the civil war. 
In these roles, he demonstrated his commitment to the development of the military, and he was instrumental in implementing some important reforms. Ibrahim Babangida served as the Chief of Army Staff in Nigeria from January 1984 to August 1985. During this time, he was responsible for overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the Nigerian Army, as well as its training and development. As Chief of Army Staff, Babangida demonstrated his exceptional leadership skills and his commitment to the development of the Manchurian military. He made significant investments in the development of the army, and he was instrumental in implementing some important reforms. Are you enjoying the video? Then subscribe to the new tourist channel, hit the like button, and do not forget to turn on the notifications so you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video on fun facts about Africa. Let's get back to the video. 1985 Coup and Babangida's Rise to Power In 1983, General Ibrahim Babangida played an important role in the coup d'etat that replaced the civilian government of Shihu Shigari with that of Muhammadu Buhari. In 1985, he led a military coup in Nigeria to overthrow the government of General Buhari. Buhari was removed from power and placed under arrest, and Babangida emerged as one of the most powerful figures in the new government. The coup was carried out in response to widespread frustration with the Buhari government, which was perceived as being corrupt and ineffective. The coup leaders, including Babangida, promised to restore stability and reform the government to better serve the Nigerian people. After the coup, he and his fellow coup leaders established the Armed Forces Ruling Council, with Babangida serving as president. The council ruled Nigeria for several years, implementing some reforms aimed at improving the country's political and economic stability. Over time, the military government faced growing criticism for its human rights abuses and its lack of progress on economic and political reforms. Babangida served as president from August 1985 to August 1993 after the military coup that brought him to power. In this role, he was responsible for overseeing the Nigerian Armed Forces, which included the Army, Navy, and Air Force, as well as being the leader of the country. Babangida removed the decree that held back press freedom during Buhari's administration and released several journalists from detention. He also opened an investigation into human rights abuses that had allegedly been perpetuated by the Buhari regime. As president, he was responsible for overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the government, as well as its domestic and foreign policies. He worked closely with the vice president of the council, General Sani Abacha, to implement some important reforms aimed at improving the lives of the Nigerian people. One of Babangida's most significant achievements was the introduction of a new economic policy known as the Structural Adjustment Program. This policy aimed to encourage economic growth by liberalizing the market, reducing government control, and increasing foreign investment. The policy was initially met with some resistance, but it ultimately helped stabilize the economy and boost economic growth. Another major achievement of Babangida's presidency was his efforts to promote democratic reforms in Nigeria. He introduced a new constitution that increased the power of the presidency, allowed for greater political freedoms, and established a two-party system. He also created a new independent electoral commission to oversee the democratic process and ensure that all elections were free and fair. Despite these positive reforms, Babangida's presidency was also marked by controversy. He faced criticism for his handling of ethnic and religious tensions and for his handling of the Gulf War, which resulted in Nigeria's suspension from the Commonwealth. He was also widely criticized for his handling of the Nigerian economy, which experienced high inflation and a currency crisis during his presidency. Ibrahim Babangida soon acquired an interest in political power for himself and set up a personal dictatorship that was more ruthless than anything Nigeria had previously experienced. His state security service gained a reputation for arbitrary arrests, detention, torture, and murder. Babangida's resignation from the office of the president. At that time, corruption was very common as well in Nigeria. Government officials continued to load the government coffers at the expense of Nigerians, which rendered them poor. Ibrahim Babangida 
implemented a series of reforms aimed at modernizing the country's economy and political system during his time in office. In 1992, Babangueda announced plans to transition the country to civilian rule, but the process was marred by controversy and political maneuvering. When it became clear that the elections would not be free and fair, public protests erupted across the country, and Babangueda was forced to annul the results. This led to further protests and calls for him to step down, and on August 1993, he announced his resignation from the presidency. He was succeeded by Ernest Shonikin, who served as interim president until General Sani Abacha came to power in a subsequent military coup on November 1993. Babangida's legacy in Nigeria remains controversial, with some regarding him as a visionary who tried to modernize the country, while others view him as corrupt and repressive. In his later years, Babangida shifted his focus from public life to his business interests. However, he remains an influential figure in Nigerian politics and continues to be a subject of controversy and debate. The story of Babangida's time in power serves as a reminder of the importance of transparency and accountability in leadership. Leaders must be held responsible for their actions and ensure that their decisions serve the best interests of their people. The lessons from Babangida's time in power remind us that leaders must act with integrity and prioritize the well-being of their people. The legacy of a leader is not just about the reforms they implement, it is also about how they handle power and the impact they have on their country and its people. We've come to the end of the video. What do you think about the life of Babangida? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video and are interested in knowing more about the continent, then subscribe to the new tourist channel and turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload new educational content like this. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video.